Cover One crew, what is going on? My name is Chris Chouse. Hope everybody's doing awesome out there. I am the newest member of the Cover One team. Grateful, glad to be here. Thank you so much, Eric, Greg, Aaron. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for welcoming me with open arms. It is wonderful. And you know what? We're branching into the fantasy realm because why not? We all need some fantasy help and assistance. For those of you that do not know my work, I am formerly of All Day Football, a company which I founded. Then I moved over and merged with the Fantasy Headliners, where I spent the last four years covering every single NFL team, players, and uh, fantasy football scouting reports, etc., etc. This is my realm of expertise, I want to say. But, I mean, we got some fantasy football. How about we talk a little start sit for week one. We already have uh, Buffalo and the L.A. Rams in the books. The Bills, Bills Mafia. Nobody circles the wagons like our Buffalo Bills. You got to love it. They just lay the smack down on those L.A. Rams, and it was a glorious showing. But we have so many uh, games coming up and so many players to discuss. So, I mean, let's waste no time. Before we get started, though, smash that like button and throw in your start sit questions in the comment section, and I will get to them as many as I possibly can can to help you guys uh, you know set up your lineup advice but nevertheless what do you say we start with uh, with a little start sit for week one so like I mentioned we got a lot of teams to cover so let's waste no time a little bit of rapid fire man we're going through every single team for y'all first we got the Atlanta Falcons the Dirty Birds new look Falcons no more Matt Ryan no more Julio Jones you got Marcus Mariota right now he is not necessarily fantasy viable at this point high risk start so I don't think anybody's really starting his services right now but he is definitely someone you got to keep your eye on he does possess rushing upside he is a better quarterback than a lot of people do believe but watch out Desmond Ritter is on his heels right now he is a high risk candidate Cordero Patterson he does possess a lot of good PPR value and upside in the running game they will likely Atlanta be a trio headed monster with Damian Williams and Tyler Algier the rookie so keep your eye on that mid risk level rank sir uh, for for Cordero Patterson to start this week I do like some PPR upside for him Damian Williams is a high risk play at this point because we don't know how the the backup uh, role will shake out will it be Damian Williams will it be Tyler Algier we still don't know so as of today he is a high risk play Drake London rookie man he is coming off the injury from the preseason game where he tweaked his knee we said we have heard that he is a questionable he will likely play but I mean you got to put a little mid rig mid level risk on his start this week because you don't know how it's going to pan out man rookie starting his first game coming off a knee injury I don't like it whatsoever I mean if, if you want to play it safe you got other options I'd say sit uh, Drake London this week if he's not going to really perform but I mean that's a decent start if you have no other options Brian Edwards, high risk because we don't know how this offense in this passing game is going to go. Who is going to take the secondary targets away? Uh, Zacchaeus, I can never pronounce his first name, and I don't want to butcher it, sir. So he is also a high risk uh, commodity at this point. I do believe Zacchaeus could take that PPR role over the slot a lot more than what we have seen in past years with the Atlanta Falcons. He is definitely one to keep your eye on. Kyle Pitts is your stud start of the week for these Atlanta Falcons. I think regardless on if the Falcons are winning or losing, there's going to be lots of garbage time product activity and Kyle Pitts is a grown man you know what I'm saying and he is going to do a lot of damage in this league start up fire up Kyle Pitts Arizona Cardinals next we got Kyler Murray stud start man for the Cardinals in a contest versus those Kansas City Chiefs it's going to be uh, likely a lot of points flying on this board we know what Kyler Murray does he's got that supreme rushing upside top five quarterback usually every single year you got James Conner he is a low risk start so I love this uh, this play as well especially against Kansas City the Chiefs do have a very good front set and so, I mean, we'll see how James will be able to, you know, manage and if he can uh, compile the same amount of productivity he did last year, we will see. You know, Benjamin is a guy who is going to be a mid-risk uh, mid start. That's a tongue twister, man. Mid-risk start for the season. You got to watch who's going to take the backup duties because this league is all about running back by committee, regardless on if you have a thoroughbred or not. James Conner is going to be the guy that you want to play week in, week out. But Eno ben Benjamin might be a guy that you can snag off your waivers later on. Marquise Hollywood. Brown, he is a low risk start this week because no D hop. We know this for uh, six game suspension. We do got A.J. Green on the field, and I mean, you do have Rondale Moore. He uh, is out with uh, injury, so now you bump up Andy Isabella just a little bit, and I'm giving Isabella a little sleeper upside because he may be able to turn in some good product productivity this week against those Kansas City Chiefs and the secondary that they possess, but that front seven in Kansas City is very good, so I would uh, you know, caution the overabundance of trying to start an Andy Isabella, but he does possess some sleeper upside. I do like the mid-level risk for A.J. Green because I, I think last year was the anomaly 
anomaly. I think that he is going to find himself, find more chemistry with Kyler Murray this week. But the Arizona Cardinals, Zach Ertz as well, he is coming off the injury as well. He is listed as a questionable play this week. So if you have other options at the tight end position, we may want to look in that direction. But I'm giving him a mid-risk right now because, I mean, if he's playing, you kind of got to start him because he does possess a lot of good upside, man. Baltimore Ravens going up against the New York Jets. And we got Lamar Jackson. He did not get his contract extended. So he is playing with that chip on his shoulder the entire year. He wants his bag. He wants his money. And he's going to show out, man. Stud start of the week for the Ravens. J.K. Dobbins, very much high risk, uh, high reward at this point. We do not know how his usage will be. I do believe he, uh, coming off the ACL injury, I do believe that he is going to be hampered for at least the first four weeks. They're going to manage his reps, manage his volume, and it's going to be a problem for all fantasy managers who did draft him in uh, this past fantasy draft. But if he is healthy, J.K. Dobbins is one of my favorites, but right now he is a very big high risk. Mid-level uh, risk for Mike Davis this week. He likely will see a lot more carries from the backfield being the backup to J.K. Dobbins and the fact that Dobbins is playing hurt or on his recovery, I should say. But I mean, Mike Davis is one. If you're really desperate for a running back, he does have some mid-level risk that you could play him this week. Rashad Bateman is low risk for me. He is now the number one wide receiver in Baltimore and Lamar Jackson is going to feed a lot of these players. But Lamar is a good passing quarterback. Now he has improved all his progressions. He is a good quarterback and he will start finding his wide receivers. Bateman, it's it, it may be up and down all season long because Mark Andrews is the number one guy who is the stud start as well on this offense. But Bateman should be very, very uh, at least consistent majority of the time for your fantasy team. Devin Duvernay and James Prochet, very much high risk plays right now until we figure out how this offense is going to morph in this wide receiver room. Duvernay does have the wheels to go deep, so he may take over that Hollywood. Wood Brown role that we had seen in past years. Don't uh, sleep on Duvernay. I think he is a very good talent, but James Prochet might be that, you know, possessional type of wide receiver. I'm not in on it right now until I see more. Isaiah Likely is an interesting one. He's got some mid-level risk, but he showcased that talent. Everybody was crucifying this man after his pro day, uh, before the NFL draft, saying that, you know, he is not a good talent, blah, blah, blah. He is a very good talent just because he didn't test well. If you guys know my work, just because a player does not test well does not mean they can't play football well on Sunday. Isaiah Likely is one of these guys who is going to turn heads. He's extremely agile. He's like a big wide receiver playing the tight end position, so I would not be surprised we see Baltimore go more to, uh, double tight end heavy sets and exploit Isaiah Likely a little bit more. Carolina, next one on my board, we got versus the Cleveland Browns. This is the Bake Show revenge game, and you know Baker Mayfield is going to want to be amped up for this contest. Head and shoulders, he is going to try his best to beat his former team. I'm rooting for a little Baker Mayfield because I did not like how that whole uh, situation transpired in Cleveland, how they got him out for Deshaun Watson. So he has got some mid-level risk because it's either going to be Baker blowing it up or Baker going to have some interceptions. Christian McCaffrey, obviously the stud start. You don't even have to think about that. Deontay Foreman is the backup. He is high risk. We're not really looking at him right now. DJ Moore, to me, this week is a stud start. He's finally got a quarterback who can get him the ball all over the field. We, DJ Moore's game is not necessarily going deep all the time. You go mid-range 20 yards. DJ Moore should feast all day long, even though this Cleveland Browns defense is still pretty good. I still see a good seven receptions for DJ Moore this week. Robbie Anderson is that mid-level risk with upside of, uh, you know, big time TD potential on the deep pass, even though Baker Mayfield is somewhat limited to that. Hopefully Matt Rule and company, they can get this offense going on the play action pass, which, uh, you know, helps and supports a Baker Mayfield in that respect. Terrace Marshall, extremely high risk. We don't know his game right now because the Panthers just, uh, you know, they continuously said he is not showcasing the talents that they hoped he would be. Tommy Tremble, my guy. I love this guy. I, going back to all my scouting reports, I do believe he is very much underrated. A fantastic blocking tight end, which should always keep him on the field and keep him in play action uh, formations in the red zone. So he does have some potential red zone upside. A lot of people sleeping on his services, but he will be likely very much inconsistent until we understand what this offense is going to look like in Carolina, man. Chicago, the Bears, the Bears. And I mean, Justin Fields, we all know I'm a huge fan of this man's game. I do believe he possesses everything you require in your starting quarterback. However, the caveat for the Bears this year until further notice is this porous offensive line. How can we trust what the Bears offensive line is going to do? This puts a damper on the David Montgomery's. This puts Justin Fields in a position where he's going to be running for his life on the weekly, and that is not something that I'm going to be looking for. Garbage time productivity will likely be very high for the Chicago Bears this season, and for those of you who don't 
no garbage time that's late in the fourth quarter when the game's basically out of hand. I do believe that's what the Bears' MO is going to be this year. David Montgomery's got some mid-level risk. He can perform on his own. He likely will do that, but I am not a huge supporter of this offense this season. Khalil Herbert, the backup, he's got some high risk. Darnell Mooney, he is the guy that is likely going to take the majority of the target share and the volume in this passing game. So based on the fact that even Justin Fields has a poor game, Darnell Mooney could have very good statistics all season long because he is the number one guy. Pringle and St. Brown, okay, very much high risk because they round out the tree in the wide receiver room. But Cole Komet is a very low risk start in my opinion. I think that, you know, Justin Fields is going to look for the check down early and often and Komet does possess a lot of red zone upside. So definitely uh, lock him into your roster because I like me some Cole Komet this week. Cincinnati Bengals, we got versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Joey B, Joey Burrow, man, he is a low risk start. The only reason why I don't have him as a stud start this week is because of the appendix surgery. He is likely over it, but I, I want us to foresee or foresee potential rust on this man's game early on in the contest. Maybe, maybe not. He's one of these guys that he's ready to go. He's got a lot of swag, but I mean, right now off the appendix, he hasn't really played. There might be a little rust to kick off early on. We could see maybe an interception, but he, he's still definitely a must start in all, all formats, man. Joe Mixon, again, low risk for me as well. Very much a good start every single week is Joe Mixon. Chris Evans, the backup, high, high risk, only because I put him here. He potentially has some PPR upside that we could, uh, you know, achieve later on in the season. Jamar Chase, stud start every single week. Smash it don't even look back. T. Higgins, basically the same thing. Cons uh, consistency rates for T. Higgins might be up and down this year simply because Jamar Chase is the uh, uh, the uh, prototypical wide receiver one, I should say, at this point in this offense. There is no doubt about it. Tyler Boyd is becoming the forgotten man at this point. He is the high-risk play week in, week out, even though he will likely find ways to catch balls. He becomes a very difficult start every single week. Hayden Hurst gets my sleeper upside alert of the week for Cincinnati because I'm a huge fan, man. What have we seen in Cincinnati missing for so many years now is a tight end position that can actually make plays. CJ Uzama was a good tight end, but I think Hayden Hurst has him beat in most facets of the game. So when we talk Hayden Hurst, if you're a streaming tight end person like I am, Hayden Hurst is definitely one you got to look out for, especially against the Steelers, who have a very good defense overall. Cleveland Browns going up against those Carolina Panthers. No Deshaun Watson for, what, 11 games. So Jacoby Brissett, you got the keys to the car, man. And it's time for you to win some contests. We know what Jacoby Brissett is, man. He's a game manager. He's a good quarterback. But is he that elite end quarterback? No, he's not. He is a high-risk play this week versus a very stout Carolina Panthers defense. However, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, I do believe you got to lock these two into the lineup this week because we will see a lot of rushing upside and a lot of checkdowns from Jacoby Brissett to get him comfortable and, you know, hopefully move this offense, control the clock. Kareem Hunt and uh, Nick Chubb should be very good upside plays this week. I got mid-level risk on Amari Cooper because this offense in the past game, I don't see it panning out to be what everybody expects it to be, especially with Deshaun Watson. If it is Watson on the field, we got a different story with Amari Cooper. This week, I got to see how it all pans out with Jacoby Brissett. Is Jacoby afraid to go deep? No, but I'm, uh, the consistency rates in it, it definitely scares me half to death. Donovan Peoples, Jones, and David Bell, they get some you know high risk to mid-level risk. Bell is that PPR upside guy, the rookie from Purdue. He is a good talent, so he might take over that Jarvis Landry role, which may increase your PPR upside. David, David Njoku, he gets a mid-level risk uh, rank for me in this offense this week due to check down and potential touchdown upside. Dallas Cowboys, man. Dak Prescott, they are going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday night football, and it's a good one, man. Dak is low risk. You plug and play him every single week. This running back room with Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard is quite interesting to say the least because I believe this will be more of a timeshare than a lot of people do believe, okay? Tony Pollard is the electric uh, playmaking running back to where Zeke might take that role where he is more the pounder. He can still catch the ball. Zeke is not, you know, completely washed, but we, I do got some grave concerns on Zeke Elliott, even though he does finish as usually as a top 10 running back in fantasy football. I think this is going to be more of a split backfield this week, so we will see how this one pans out. C.D. Lamb is your stud start week in, week out smash that button don't look back Noah Brown 
we got to understand who is going to be the secondary wide receiver in Dallas, and this is the week we're going to see it. Still with Michael Gallup on the injury list because of the torn ACL recovery. Noah Brown and Jalen Tober, the rookie who I've been preaching up all offseason, man. He is definitely a sleeper alert in week one. High risk, obviously, for all the sleepers. You might get a goose egg in that category, but, I mean, they definitely have a lot of upside. Dalton Schultz, a definite stud start. I think Dak Prescott will utilize the tight end position a lot, and Dalton Schultz will be uh, returning a lot on the investment you gave up to go and get his services. Denver Broncos, let's ride with Russell Wilson. And I mean, again, stud start for Russell Wilson, Javante Williams against the Seattle Seahawks. Russ going back to Seattle on Monday night football. And you know they're, the crowd is going to cheer up Russell Wilson as he comes out the gates. But then as the game goes on, they're going to boo this man. But Russell Wilson's ready to go. This offense really required. I mean, Denver's, man, this is what Denver does. After they got Peyton Manning, it was quarterback purgatory. Now you got yourself another elite quarterback who is a Super Bowl champion. And now you got a, an offense that he can definitely support with Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon. I mean, stud start obviously is Javante, but Melvin is going to eat into that as well. So Melvin will likely get a lot of touches in this contest, especially if it gets out of hand. So if you were thinking, should I start Melvin Gordon over a lesser commodity, you can probably start Melvin Gordon this week and not sweat it out too much. Cortland Sutton is a stud start this week. I do believe that Russell Wilson is going to feed this man on the regular. Something like we saw with DK Metcalf, we're going to see a very similar trait with a Cortland Sutton this year. Jerry Judy is one of these guys. I got him at a mid-level risk as we start the season. I love Judy's game. Always been a big fan, but the dropping problems and the inconsistency in his first two years has been the headache that we have seen, and it's been a, a big problem for us fantasy managers, so he's got mid-level risk right now. KJ Hamler is the high risk because he's basically has the long TD upside is what we get so we'll see how he morphs in this offense and Albert oh I will never pronounce your name correctly I will never try he's got mid-level risk because he is a very good tight end I like this offense a lot and going up against a Seattle Seahawks team which is in disarray and will likely be a top three picker in next year's NFL draft let's ride man Denver Broncos you guys are going to light them up on Monday Night Football Detroit Lions next one versus the Philadelphia Eagles and this is a tough task as the Eagles defense is very stout very solid Jared Goff high risk in my regard I don't like it this week I think the the front seven of the Eagles will give him a run for the money DeAndre Swift is a very low risk start every single week likely barring injury I like his game a lot I think he's going to produce a boatload of talent Amon Ross St. Brown a little mid-risk level only because we this secondary this defense I'm a huge fan of in Philadelphia and I think they're going to be a uh, very very sharp and they were going to you know put a lot of pressure on Jared Goff which is going to inhibit top end numbers in this pass game DJ Char gets a sleeper upside update for me because I think the deep shot is going to be there and attempted by uh, Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions more often than not I like Chark this week if you're in a pinch and you need someone to start in your flex we got TJ Hawkinson he has been you know the staple of inconsistent as of recent uh, memory because of the injuries lack of usage I don't like it so I want to see him prove a little bit more to me even though I I do like his talent overall. I think he's a great tight end, but right now, mid-level risk. Might get some check down upside from Jared Goff. Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers, the Cheeseheads going up against the Minnesota Vikings. We got Aaron Rodgers, clearly a stud start. Yes, no Devontae Adams anymore. We understand this is the problem in Green Bay. Who is going to be the trusted commodity at the wide receiver position? We got Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, both rookies. Who are they going to play? This is the problem. Who's going to be the guy? Are they just going to spread the ball around, you know, whoever's open? And this might benefit the Green Bay Packers offense as a whole as the season goes on. No direct wide receiver one like Devontae was. Now you're going to go and morph and spread around to every any wide receiver who's open. But this will always keep Aaron Rodgers in the realm of being a top 10 quarterback in fantasy football on the weekly. They will utilize the run game a little bit more with Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. Both are good starts for me this week. Robert Tunney is the interesting one because he is coming off the ACL but I do believe he does have a lot of chemistry with uh, Aaron Rodgers and he could be a sneaky play week in week out if he is healthy Alan Lazard likely not to play doubtful because of that knee injury so he is another wide receiver in this mix of cluster F's that we don't like to deal with with fantasy football Houston Texans next one versus the Indianapolis Colts division game to start off this season Davis Mills high risk this entire offense to me is high risk man how can you not think so I mean, Davis Mills, you know, offensive line is okay, not great. They got themselves Damian Pierce. Everyone in their, you know, are over the moon uh, over Damian Pierce. I am not a huge fan, and especially on an offense that, you know, everyone's going to stack the box on. 
We'll see how it goes, okay? I'm not going to say that Damian Pierce is a bad running back. I just have my question marks on his game. Can he handle over 250 touches in this league? He never did it at Florida, so how can we say he's going to be a prototypical running back one in the NFL? We'll see, though, okay? I'm just putting the caveat on that right now. Burkhead, okay, we know who he is. Brandon Cooks is likely the only low-risk start in this offense weekly because he just turns out good produ uh, production week in, week out. He is always getting 1,000-yard uh, receiving seasons no matter who his quarterback is if you want to trust anybody out of this offense it is Brandon Cooks and the rest of these folks we rounded out but it is those Houston Texans they're trying to rebuild and revamp this offense but it doesn't look great for fantasy football Indianapolis Colts playing those Houston Texans we this team I like I like this team a lot now that they got Matty Ice on as a quarterback you got Jonathan Taylor Naheem Hines Michael Pittman Paris Campbell Alec Pierce Mo Ali Cox Mo Cox Mo Problems and I mean this is what we do okay we understand that this team is going to be predicated upon the run game with Jonathan Taylor. Fabulous offensive line. We know what the Colts are. Now you add a piece like Matt Ryan, who is diminishing in skill. I'm not trying to say he is the Matt Ryan of old, but Matt Ryan can still throw 4,200 yards and 30 touchdowns in this league. He will give you the interception problems where it is likely around 12 to 15 per season, if not more. But he's going to be able to spread the ball in this offense, especially behind this offensive line where he's going to have ample opportunity and time to dissect the defense in the field. I like it a lot, man. Jonathan Taylor and, uh, you know, Matt Ryan this week going up against Houston. Their stud starts plays for me. I do like it a lot. Naheem Hines should get some more PPR upside where Michael Pittman is going to be a stud start a lot this year because of Matt Ryan. They're going to feed him the ball. Now we're going to see exactly what Michael Pittman's going to be. What do we do with the rest of these wide receivers? Michael or uh, Paris, Paris Campbell, excuse me. He, he's got some sleeper upside. I am not out on Paris Campbell. Everyone jumped off the bandwagon. I am still on it because I believe even his skill set. I believe he is that dynamic. He's got a lot of strength, a lot of speed. It's just injuries that foiled this man over the past couple seasons. And I think Sleeper Upside is definitely here. He's going to be a priority waiver wire pick for a lot of people if he shows out, man. Alec Pierce, mid-level risk for this rookie. And I mean, I do like his game a lot. Coming from Cincinnati, he is that big wide receiver. He's got some wheels. He can have contested catch ability. There is going to be red zone upside for an Alec Pierce all season long. And of course, Mo Ali Cox, we'll see how they utilize the tight end position uh, from Matt Ryan. But Matt Ryan will be able to spread this ball around, even though Jonathan Taylor is going to be the focal point week in, week out. Jacksonville Jaguars going up against the Washington Commanders, the commies. And I mean, okay, t uh, Trevor Lawrence. I got sleeper upside on this man this week because I do believe this offense is going to be head and shoulders better than what they were last year. How can you not get out of the stink of what the head coaching staff did last year? He is out. We got Doug Peterson now the head coach. He is a little bit more sustainable in productivity. Travis Etienne, low risk upside for me because I've been on the Travis Etienne bandwagon. I wanted this man in Buffalo for God's sakes. I think Etienne is a beautiful dual threat appeal that you look for as you're running back one. James Robinson coming off the Achilles. He'll be nursed along as well. Very much high risk. Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, they all get mid-level risk for me because we don't know. It is week one. We don't know how this offense is going to morph, who they're going to utilize as the primary target. Will they be? Will this be an offense that does spread the ball around a lot? This very much could be the case in Jacksonville. Also, Evan Ingram is an interesting name. Keep your eye on him. He is likely on waivers on every single league at this point outside of deeper leagues if Evan Ingram fixes his dropping problem and Trevor Lawrence is the guy throwing him the ball we could see Evan Ingram come back to numbers that we hoped and expected him to be uh, in the 65 to like 850 yard range with touchdown appeal because he is an athletic freak he just continues to drop the ball catch the ball Evan and we'll, we'll support you man but nevertheless that is the the Jacksonville Jaguars next up is Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Arizona Cardinals we got Patrick Mahomes clearly stud start no, no think about that man CEH Clyde Edwards Hilaire I'm kind of off the CEH bandwagon at this point he's got to show it to me he's been horrible on goal line you know he's very inconsistent he's got injury problems always getting nicked up I, I was I, uh, telling everybody that I'm not drafting CEH this year if you did I hope for the best for y'all but I just don't see it in this offense you got Isaiah Pacheco the rookie and you do got some Rojo in this backfield they're gonna be likely mix and matching a lot of these guys so I put a high risk for Pacheco only because we don't know if he's gonna jump Rojo in that respect so 
So I think Pacheco is going to be that guy at this point that we got to, you know, at least look at. Juju Smith-Schuster, very much a low risk. I think he's going to eat up targets. PPR upside, if you're in full PPR leagues and you got Juju, start smiling because he's going to catch himself 110 balls this year in this offense, even though they spread the ball around. They're likely going to spread the ball around, I should say, in this offense. McCole Hardman, uh, Valdez Scantling, both the deep threats. We will see if McCole Hardman does kind of morph and take that Tyreek Hill role now that Tyreek is gone. But I mean, th this offense in the secondary pieces in the wide receiver room is where we got to understand how are they going to perform. So I got some risk on them as well. Travis Kelsey is your stud start. Just like Patrick Mahomes, you don't even have to think twice about that on a weekly basis. Bolt up, man. The L.A. Chargers going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. And Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler, your stud starts of the week for the Ra or the Chargers. Excuse me. Don't even have to think about it. It is what it is. Sonny Michelle is a name we got to keep our eye on simply because he's the one guy that vultures away touches from everyone else that we want. I'm an Isaiah Spiller fan. I am a, I am a big supporter of his man, of his game, I should say. And, and I'm hoping that he's going to be able to uplift his game. He did deal with some injuries in the preseason. Hopefully, uh, you know, that's why they got Sony Michelle. Little insurance policy, but if Sony can play, he will likely steal some touchdown upside from an Austin Eckler. But I'm hoping Isaiah Spiller can eat into that. He is high risk as we enter week one, though. But he is definitely one to watch. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, they are very safe plays as per usual, week in, week out. The AFC West is going to be, if, if the uh, AFC West teams are playing each other, it's going to be a uh, light out show on the scoreboard pretty much every single week so you can start all the studs on the offenses in those contests because points are going to be flying all over the board Joshua Palmer is one of my favorites as well he is a high risk only because we enter week one but I do believe his role is going to morph as that wide receiver three he's likely going to see lesser coverage and be that much more product uh, productive in this offense Gerald Everett again I want to see how this Chargers offense is going to morph to use the tight end position it may be far and few between but we might see some red zone upside for Gerald Everett, but I'm looking in another direction because I do believe the wide receivers and the running backs take first priority in this offense. We got those Las Vegas Raiders going up against the Chargers, and we got Derek Carr, and he's a very much a low risk. Again, you start in a majority of these players when you're playing AFC West competition versus each other because they're going to be putting up a lot of points. Derek Carr is very much underrated. Consistency trends, okay, we can say not the best overall, but he is an underrated quarterback quarterback in this league and he will showcase it now with his buddy Devontae Adams the, co the college connection the chemistry is going to be there definitely uh, between Adams and Carr this week stud start for Adams Josh Jacobs is the interesting one because a lot of people are fading him, believing that uh, Josh McDaniels, the head coach, is going to you know morph a more uh, approach tandem in this offense that we haven't seen in L.A. where Jacobs was the primary source. Brandon Bolden is that other guy. Zamir White is that other guy now. Com uh, potential trio head monster in Vegas. We could see it, but I still think Josh Jacobs, did, they declined his fifth-year option. We know this. So they will likely run this man into the ground and then set him, send him past in the free agent market next season. So I do expect Josh Jacobs to still have a very sizable role, even though they're going to mix and match some of these running backs in this room. Hunter Renfro, man, low risk every single week. He is Wes Welker light, if we want to say. This man's route tree is ridiculous. He will find ways, and the PPR upside will be there. We got to say the yardage may not. We do have TD upside short and, and PPR upside, but he is a very low risk start for me. Darren Waller is your likely stud start when he's playing. He's looking for that contract he was rehabbing his knee if a, or hamstring I can't remember which uh which he hampered this offseason but I mean he's on the field this week he is definitely a start in this Chargers contest Miami Dolphins going up against the New England Patriots in disarray in New England where Miami is starting to move on the uptick man to a tag of Aloha I think he is a very good start this week because those New England Patriots they are hurting on both sides of the ball they're gonna struggle I do believe for majority of the season and Miami should be able to roll quite easily where I do like this offense is Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. When you see both those individuals line up on the same side of the field, you're going to see defensive backs dump themselves on the regular because how do you stop that speed, man? I just don't know what the heck's going to go on. 
I think Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are absolute threats every single week that you can start. The only reason why I got a mid-level risk on a Jalen Waddle this week is because he was dealing with some injury that was undisclosed. They kept it under wraps in Miami the entire time, and we did not know what it was. He is likely to start, but he is one you got to you know at least pay attention to. Is he going to be playing hurt for a lot of the season? We got to say the running back room is very tricky. Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, we're going to see a lot of splits. We might even see trios in this backfield as well. So we I put mid-level risk for week one because we just need to understand how it shakes down. Cedric Wilson, Mike Gusecki get the high risk for me. I think that Gusecki is going to see a lot of, you know, lesser targets than everyone is expecting because of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. But I mean, if you're in a pinch and you, you drafted him and you're going to start him, start him up and see where it goes. But I think they're going to try to use Gusecki only in the red zone and make him block a little bit more in this Dolphins offense. Minnesota versus those Green Bay Packers. Kirk Cousins, low risk. I love this game. This game should be a very good uh, point fest as well. I do love this offense, especially with the LA Rams OC coming over. They're going to be more high octane, more high power, more uh, efficient in the in the pass game, in the run game, offensively overall. Kirk Cousins, very much a low risk. Dalvin Cook, stud start. Don't even think about it. Madison, okay, he's the backup, whatever. I'm just putting him in there as a high risk. We know this. JJ, another stud start. So you got basically three very good starts week in, week out on this Minnesota offense that you love. I got a low risk on Adam Thielen. And everybody's out. I am not. I am staying in until proven otherwise. Yes, Adam Thielen has spent some time in the medical room of late. He has been a problem for us, but he catches touchdowns. This is what you want, man. He still puts up good yards, 850 to 900 yards, but he's going to give you 10 to 12 touchdowns every single year in this offense. I still love me some Adam Thielen. If you got him in your flex, you're smiling. There's no problem with that, man. Wide receiver two, I get it. A little bit more scary, but in your flex, it's absolutely gorgeous. Osborne and Irv Smith, they are high risks for me because we got to see how they're going to morph this offense, but Minnesota overall does look very, very good, man. Those New England Patriots going up against the Miami Dolphins, disarray, man. What can we say other than disarray because you got a defensive coordinator likely calling plays for you on the offense? Mac Money Jones, that's my co uh, coin phrase for Mac Jones. Mac Money Jones, I feel sorry for you, man. Mid-level risk because I do believe he is a better quarterback than the, you know, play calls will likely give him. I think he's still going to be able to, you know, at least produce something in this offense. Where it comes to sleeper upside, let's start there. Ramondre Stevenson, I've been on this, man. Coming out of OU, I thought, you know, he was absolutely phenomenal. Went back to his junior college film. He is so good, and now he's proving it and showing it. Has a lot of trust in Bill Belichick. Everyone says, you know, we cannot trust a New England backfield. This year we can, even with both Damian Harris and Ramondre. I think it's going to be a very, you know, nice split in carries and touches where Ramondre, his very good hands, very soft hands, that he's going to be able to corral those balls and get it in. I said that on purpose. But, I mean, he's going to be able to, you know, give you PPR upside where Damian Harris is likely still going to give you a lot of rushing upside and touchdown appeal. Devontae Parker is that sleeper upside. Why? Revenge game, man. Never discount a revenge game. Going up against his former team in the Miami Dolphins, I could foresee Devontae. Monte Parker getting force fed early and often and potentially getting a touchdown in this one. I do not overly like this rest of this wide receiver room because they do spread the ball around Agu uh, Nelson Aguilar and then Jacoby Myers. He is also dealing with an injury. So keep your eye on that. We got Hunter Henry who I do like as well because he does possess that touchdown red zone appeal and he will morph a lot of points likely in the touchdown barring health, of course. But this New England Patriots offense is going to be very hard to trust every single week. The New Orleans Saints up, the, up against those Atlanta Falcons and I think this offense, barring any health issues from Jameis Winston, will be lights out glorious. Yes, no more Sean Payton. We understand what is going on in New Orleans, but... If Jameis Winston is healthy, I'm saying start, start this week because he can put up points and he can put up yards with the best of them in the league. Atlanta's defense is very much porous. We will not be able to trust it. Alvin Kamara, stud start. He, We did get lucky. The suspension did not come. I'm, I'm still locking in Alvin Kamara as a start this week. Michael Thomas, he's got some risk. He may not play. He's dealing with an injury this week, so definitely keep your eye on that. But we got uh, you know some help. We got Jarvis Landry and Chris Olave, my guy from OSU. Olave is that sleeper upside in week one where everybody will not know his game just yet. I'm telling you, he is a route tree magician. He's got a nose for the end zone. So if you're looking for high upside play in your flex position, that is Chris Olave. And uh, I wish he never changed his number because I had a good nickname called CO2 for him because he wore number two. Now he changed that. Now he foiled my nickname, which sucks. Adam Troutman. And then you're going to have uh, Taysom Hill as your tight end. We don't know really who to trust at this point. Jarvis Landry will always give you that PPR upside that you can 
can covet. New York Giants at Tennessee, and I mean Danny Jones. Daniel Pennies is what we call him. Because, I mean, it's Danny Pennies, man. He's got to improve his game. Yes, everybody's saying Brian Dable's going to improve Daniel Jones to be something that he should be. I'm not convinced. I got to see it on the field before I start preaching up his good graces. Saquon Barkley, though, I am all in this year. Contract year, he's coming off the injuries. Everyone called him injury prone. This is not true. He had the ACL. They nursed him along. Then he rolled his ankle. And then that's what kind of foiled his entire campaign last year. It is just unfortunate run of luck for Saquon, but he is a top running back in this league if you got his services you are starting him on the weekly Kenny Galladay I'm off the wagon he just seems disinterested 110 percent where you got Kadarius Tony and Wandale Robinson who are both mid-level risks because they are so dynamic in their play Kadarius Tony though he does possess a lot of injury risk man he because of how he plays he's always got soft tissue injuries so definitely keep your eye on that Sterling Shepard is a high risk and the rookie tight end we cannot trust at this point but the New York Giants they're off Offense will be interesting as they go up against a Tennessee defense that is still very, very good. Yeah, the New York Jets, the other team from New York, we got Joe Flacco starting because Zach Wilson is injured. Nobody's playing Joe Flacco. Let's not kid ourselves. But why it is important, because we like the running backs in New York. I love, this is like blasphemy, but I love how this New York Jets team is building on paper because they got a lot of players that I do like. Brees Hall, Michael Carter in the running back room. I do believe, you know, we're seeing a lot in, uh, you know, media stretch where they're trying to push the Michael Carter angle saying, you know, he's likely the, the top guy in this offense in the running back room. Then why did you draft Brees Hall where you drafted him? You're looking for a thoroughbred, and that is what Brees Hall is. Will they do a qu uh, uh, quite a mix and match early on? I could definitely see that. But I do believe this is going to be Brees Hall's backfield as we get into like week three and four, where Michael Carter will spell him. He will have upside in PPR game as well. Garrett Wilson, the other rookie who's got absolute flash and appeal to be a, a number one wide receiver in this league. And I think just with Joe Flacco, we'll see. Joe can at least spread the ball around, but I do like the sleeper upside this week because nobody knows what he's going to be able to put on the field. Garrett Wilson, I'm talking about, and I do like his game. Elijah Moore, very low risk, speedy upside, PPR upside. He's got the run after the catch ability. You're going to like it. Too much risk for Corey Davis. I think he's going to be the forgotten man in this offense. And CJ Uzama, red zone appeal because Joe Flacco did like throwing to his tight end so maybe we see Uzama get a sneaky touchdown at some point but he's got some mid-level risk at this point I, I I think if you're starting Uzama you had some drafting problems in your streaming tight ends all season long so he's definitely one of those guys excuse me the Philadelphia Eagles man against those Detroit Lions we got Jalen Hurts stud start because of that rushing upside I still got question marks on his passing aptitude and I still will until proven otherwise they do have a lot more talent at the wide receiver position now with AJ Brown on the field he's another grown at man if you know what I'm saying but now you got Miles Sanders and Kenny Gainwell I don't know this running back room right now how can we trust it Miles Sanders always go into the medical room he was dealing with that hamstring injury soft tissue injuries have been his problem the coaching staff does not like Miles Sanders. Kenny Gainwell's high risk because we don't know how they're going to morph his game. Will he be able to, you know, beat up on the Detroit Lions defense? That is a lot better on paper. We shall see. A.J. Brown, I believe, is a low-risk start because Jalen Hurts is going to look to his direction and he should get at least 10 targets this week. Devonta Smith, mid-risk, mid-level uh, mid risk this week. I do believe he's going to have good appeal for majority of the season. See lesser coverage now that A.J. Brown is on the field. Quez Watkins is your deep threat guy. He's going to be very inconsistent consistent and Dallas Goddard man he is your stud start because Jalen Hurts just loves the man and he possesses a lot of touchdown appeal Pittsburgh Steelers at those Cincinnati Bengals now we got a new look offense no more Big Ben Mitchell Trubisky won the role and he's a mid-level risk for me he does have rushing upside but we want to see how his passing aptitude and upside is going to be as well something like we talk about Jalen Hurts we talk about Mitchell Trubisky with less rushing upside so this is a big problem Najee Harris is your low risk start with a Jalen Ward that everybody needs to keep your eye on. He is high risk at this point, but if he does get any touches, he will showcase his talent, maybe even pull back 40 touches from Najee Harris to keep him a little bit more healthy and upright. Keep in mind, Najee uh, did strain his Liz Frank in the preseason 
excuse me, in the preseason. So we will see if Najee Harris is going to be, you know, uh, be able to be healthy for the uh, entire season on that Liz Frank. Deontay Johnson is a mid risk. He is likely playing, but he did strain that AC joint in that preseason game. So I do not like it whatsoever. AC joints are, make it very difficult for you to even lift your arm, man. So that's definitely a tough one. Chase Claypool and George Pickens. We shall see how this offense does morph because now you got two trees of human beings, very tall human beings in Chase Claypool and George Pickens and Pickens is an alpha man I've been saying it all day long through the scouting reports George Pickens is an alpha wide receiver in this league and he showed it he will show it and he will continue to show it so if you got yourself George Pickens on your bench let him sit there a little bit because you know we got to see how this offense works in week one but he's definitely got some high upside Pat Fryermuth, the Muth he is going to be one of the consistent tight ends, likely because Mitchell Trubisky is going to look for check down options all over the field, and you can't hate that whatsoever. The Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football hosting uh, Russell Wilson's Let's Ride uh, Denver Broncos. And again, this is going to be one of those offenses like the Houston Texans that we do not like overall because they got a lot of problems, okay, because of the quarterback position in Geno Smith. Rashad Penny is the one guy that I do like this week because we don't have Kenneth Walker the third, and Penny will likely get a boatload of volume in this contest. So basic on volume to path to targets, path to volume... Rashad Penny is the guy that we can likely trust more often than not. DK Metcalf is an interesting play because he's going to likely have to do it all by himself. I have got no faith in Geno Smith to support and spread the ball to DK Lockett. You know, no offense. I got no, no faith whatsoever in Geno Smith at this point. Sorry, Geno, no offense. I just got no faith in you, man. But we got to say, if you drafted some Seattle players, it's probably DK. It's probably Rashad Penny. And you got to play him this week because it is week one. They are the healthy they've ever been of the season so you got to play the guys that you drafted at this point of the of the start of the season San Francisco 49ers going up against Chicago Bears like I said the poorest Bears defense and I mean I'm taking the, the 49ers to absolutely trounce these Bears even though it is likely going to rain so we got to keep our eye on that Trey Lance stud start Eli Mitchell stud start for me don't even think back because now you got the read option the RPOs that you're going to be able to have in this offense with a Trey Lance that you did not have with Jimmy G so I, I love the run game in this offense, 110%. Debo, obviously, you're going to smash start, no problem. Brandon Ayuk, get back on board with Brandon Ayuk. All offseason long, what did we see? We saw Trey Lance, we saw Brandon Ayuk going deep, contested catchability, sideline, toe taps, back shoulder fades with Ayuk. He is going to be and showcase. Th breakout for wide receivers is what, I should say? Year three, and what year is Ayuk in? Year three, man. So we're going to understand what Brian and Ayuk is going to be likely after this year. I'm a big fan of this this year. I do believe that Ayuk is out of the doghouse, and we're going to see a lot of throws come his way. George Kittle is that guy we got to watch on the mid-level risk because he didn't practice all week dealing with a new injury. So he's supposed to play, but he might be a decoy. So, I mean, uh, just keep your eye on that as the, the injury reports do come out with the, with the lineup advice for sure. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we got the Bucs going up against those Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night football. Tom Brady dealing with his offseason issues. A lot of speculation. It is personal with the family, so that's a problem. Could be in his head, but it is Tom Brady. He is the most comfortable on a football field. The GOAT himself, obviously low risk in a big game, big showdown on Sunday night football. Leonard Fournette, I'm always in on me on some Leonard Fournette. I always have been a supporter but it looks like he's carrying a trailer out there when he's running the football now. He's lost a lot of jets on the top end speed. I do like his game in the PPR upside. He's always going to give you that high end upside with catches, but he's a mid-level risk for me. And the simple fact is it's Rashad White, this rookie. I want to see how this offense is going to utilize two backs in this backfield. And I think Rashad White is going to be that guy. He's got high risk in week one, but I do believe as the year does morph, we're going to see his role increase and see more splits happen. Leonard Fournette is your guy this week. Keep your eye on Rashad White. Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Russell Gage, these guys, okay? I got Evans as obviously your stud start. He is just the, the staple of uber consistency. You cannot bench this man Julio Jones I gave him sleeper upside never in my imagination did I believe I would have to put sleeper upside on Julio Jones 
but it's only because of the injuries. Russell Gage is dealing with some injuries. Chris Godwin still coming back from his ACL. I do believe they're going to nurse Godwin along. He will see some snaps, but will it be enough for you to start him week in, week out? I don't think so until we get about, you know, week five, week four, and then we see him progress. Right now, Julio Jones, you know, okay, he does not catch touchdowns, but he changed his number to number six from 85. That gives him every ounce of upside for me. He looks like he's back to his former self. Is injury risk for Julio there? 110%. But in this offense with a Tom Brady, with a Mike Evans, Julio Jones has got massive sleeper appeal, and you may want to look in his direction to start him. Russell Gage, like I said, injured a little bit, so keep your eye on that one. Last one I got on my board. No, I got two more left, man. The Tennessee Titans going up against those New York Giants. Ryan Tannehill, he is, you know, he's going to give you the 200 yards, likely one to two touchdowns, okay? In this offense, going to be very different. Still focal point in this offense is Derrick Henry. Smash start every single week. Where you got Robert Woods, Traylon Burks, Westbrook Akeen, we're going to see how this offense does morph. Robert Woods is going to be your guy that you look to for PPR safe floors every single week again. He recovered extremely well off the ACL, which I, I found very, uh, you know, interesting especially for a man his age coming off the ACL like he did, but he did very well in that respect, man. Traylon Burks, we got this rookie. We'll see how he pans out, but I think he's going to be your big play threat that's going to replace the A.J. Brown role, and he looks very good. Sleeper alert as well for Austin Hooper, I think, in the red zone. He may not catch a lot of balls in this offense, two to three, four balls every single week, but he's got the ability to score touchdowns off the play-action pass, which I think they will utilize a lot. And this Giants defense, you know, new coaching staff. We'll see how they do but I like Tennessee this week. Last one I got is those Washington Commanders, the Commies, going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Carson Wentz in this offense I do like a lot. I do have problems with Carson Wentz overall at his game, but he's got weapons at his disposal with scary Terry McLaurin, rookie De Jahan Dotson, who I am a huge supporter of, and I do believe he's going to pull a lot of coverage. There's going to be very few double teams for Terry McLaurin now, and now you add a, a potential healthy Curtis Samuel. We shall see how Curtis Samuel will operate in this offense. He's always finding his way to the medical room, like Logan Thomas, also coming off the ACL, so we'll see how he is going to be. So for me, Antonio Gibson gets the default start because uh, 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 the Robinson, the rookie, the other running back, Bryant Robinson, his name evaded me for a second there. He was shot, if you guys didn't know, so he's going to be out for the foreseeable future. He is okay, thankfully, but I mean, Antonio Gibson gets his role back by default, where we could see Carson Wentz spread the ball quite a bit and this Jacksonville front seven will give Wentz a run for their money, but I do love Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson this week as potential upside plays, but there you go. That is a mouthful playing all 30 teams, but there you go. Hopefully that helps y'all. So there you have it. There is every team breakdown on potential fantasy value for these players for week one. Hopefully this will help you guys out. I rank them a little bit so you can understand where I see their values each week. We will do this on the weekly basis, so definitely get used to it. But nevertheless, let me get out of here because it's a long show. So as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments. If you have any start sick questions, I will get to as many as I possibly can. But we'll see you next time. I am out.